Oh like there, there's stop. a sausage. Dude, stop. <laughs> You want me to make a collage reference? salvation, the sword of the spirit or God's word, and the sandals of peace. And that like wearing that armor every day kind of makes you spiritually dressed for success, I guess. Okay. And you're encouraged to wear this every day. So I'm going to basically be giving um, a small summary about the components of this armor and what it means to us. The first is the belt of truth. Uh, this is about knowing God's truth and accepting it and studying it. Um, you know that quote that says, um, the truth shall set you free? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you put that in a spiritual sense, it's like, it's like saying that knowing God's truth will set you free from your sin and from your burdens because you know that like, he's sharing that um, burden with you so that you can be relieved. From it. it helps you know the difference between good and bad, and sin and salvation. Um, Jesus, is, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and this is a quote from the Bible. Um, following, following him puts us on the right path, and the truth saves us and leads us away from temptation. So basically, by knowing the truth, and by studying God's word, and by going to like church where they, um, they talk about all of these, these topics on how to be a good disciple of Christ. It's really important to have that kind of knowledge because in life there's a lot of unexpected um, things that come at you so you have to really know the difference between what's good and bad and if, it's okay if you don't know there's always like since we're a church we're really united we can always go to each other go to a priest and just ask for advice because you know we're family like that. Yay. Okay uh, the breastplate of righteousness. I guess I'll just like read from what I have here and then talk about it. Um, connecting your actions and words with the truth. It's helpful in unexpected situations of life because every day is built with a series of choices. It's our responsibility to choose righteously. This is being Christ-like, even if we're too lazy, too busy, or too concerned about what other people think of us. It's important to remember that God's opinion means so much more than public opinion. Okay, so staying righteous, I guess, well, like, as you will see, as I explain all of these, they go, this armor of God, it goes hand in hand with each other. It, like, complements each other. So, by knowing God's truth, um, we're able to be righteous because we know what to do, and we're basically putting, like, our knowledge into action in our life, and we know how to face things. Every day, we're encouraged to be, like, Christ-like and God-like and always have that kind of mindset. Um, Something that I usually tell myself is like to remember what God wants from me in the dullest of moments and the most exciting of moments, which is like when I'm, the most exciting of moments is like when I'm with friends or like there's this huge event going on and then everyone's so busy and it's, it's a lot of fun, but, and then you just get carried away with your friends or you might do something that you like regret later or something like that. Um, so it's always good to hold on to that and hold the, breastplate of righteousness because it just guides you from all of those unexpected things because we never know what's going to happen each day. Um, sandals of peace, that is the next one. Sandals? Yeah, sandals. Um, are there socks of peace? Socks of peace? I don't think there are <laughs> socks of sandals. peace. <laughs> There's different forms of peace. There's like inner peace, peace over, choosing peace over vengeance basically. Uh, the peace of the church, peace among nations and families and stuff, and peace is just everywhere. So, um, there is peace during trials is something incredibly precious. When everything feels like it's falling apart, Christians are encouraged to stay positive and offer up their pain to Christ. They are filled with peace because God is their stronghold and His grace is enough. The periods of tribulation are not even a fraction of eternal life. We should have peace as we patiently wait for the coming of the kingdom of God. Welcome the Holy Spirit. 
knowing God <laughs> is it brings us a lot of um, peace because we know that He's going to be there. Like when we open our eyes, we know that God has been right there, like watching over us as we slept and making sure that we have good dreams and enough energy to get up in the morning. When we go to church, we always we feel that kind of peace because the Holy Spirit is present, especially when we accept the Eucharist, and we're just. Um, and I think it's a really beautiful thing because when we're at church, we get to be there with our families and our families are united with other fami families in our community and we're just like this one united um, family in Christ. We are one body. So we have that kind of peace there and we have the comfort of our family and our friends. Um, oh yeah, something that I mentioned earlier, peace over vengeance. That's something that a lot of people face today a lot, I guess, because they can, um, like, let's say someone gets really insulted because someone told them something, I guess, um, they're, like, the human reaction would be to just get vengeance on them so you can be even, um, and that's really tempting to do for, um, for us because it just, it just feels like it's the right thing to do, but that's just our human nature, like, trying to lead us away. I guess, in a way. Um, but peace over vengeance is better, even though at the moment, like, turning away from whatever they said to you may, might not feel like the right decision because you still feel like icky inside, I guess. <laughs> it's important because once you turn away, God's like, yeah, you did it. That's what I wanted you to do. This is great. Okay, the next is the shield of faith. Examples of faith could be as simple as having faith that you will wake up to a new day the next morning, or having faith that you will have a great day. As Catholics, we have faith in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We have faith in our Blessed Mother that she will pray for us, love us, and treat us as her children despite our sinfulness. Faith and works go together in honoring Christ. Faith and works, faith and works, 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 works. Faith allows us to shield others, love yourself, I mean, love yourself. Okay, yeah. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's the second commandment. Um, being there for family and friends and helping them bear their cross. Raising your shield takes patience and endurance. Oh my gosh. Okay, shield of faith is a big one. Because every day when we put on our armor and such, we have to have our shield. Our shield is the one that like is the main component for dodging all those offenses and such. Having faith in God is just so important. It's like, as, as Catholics, we're supposed to have faith in God that He's going to be there and that our mother is right there with us too and praying for us. And Amen. Amen. And we have faith in the Trinity and such and such. Amen. <laughs> oh, and it's really good to have faith even though like we know, like we're aware of how sinful we are. We mess up every day. Sometimes they're even the same mistakes. Right. Yeah. Sucks. Over and over again. But, um, but what's amazing is it never fails to amaze me that, like, we're still so loved and we're still so important in God's eyes. And we have, we have faith in Him that He's still, like, with us. And He is. Every day, every day, no matter how, like, Awful it might be, I guess. There's always, I notice that there's always like at least one or two or three, I don't know. There's a lot of things to smile about. Even if it's like, okay, um, you lost your dog like I did. And it uh, came back. It came After back. After like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then like maybe you'll go home and there are fresh baked cookies that are your favorite flavor and then you're just like thanks mom and then or dad <laughs> or dad Shrek. <laughs> Shrek. <laughs> oh. okay okay we're good for example we have faith in our family members like our parents love us unconditionally even though we upset them sometimes with like maybe not taking out the trash or not putting away our things which happens to me a lot I guess um, but we have faith that they're still going to love us and then it allows us to just come to them and love them and to make sure they're okay 
Yeah. This is the helmet of salvation. Salvation is not something we earn. We've been saved through God's Son as He died for our sins and turned aside the Father's wrath on humankind. Our, so, uh, our salvation isn't something that wears away, it is eternal. Wearing the helmet will remind us of our ultimate goal, and our ultimate goal is getting to heaven! Yay! Jesus Christ made this possible for us. So with this hope in eternal life with God, we are encouraged to keep a moral and healthy mindset. And we are the ambassadors of Christ, united in one church. What's funny about salvation is that humankind, like there are some people who believe in God and they know that they're saved, but there are people out there completely oblivious that they've just been saved, like someone died for them 2,000 years ago and it's still affecting them today because they wake up every morning and they have a good day or they do this or that. They don't realize that they're so blessed <laughs> and that they're saved, and that um, by living a good life, they can have eternal life with God, and they'll be with Him in heaven forever. Oh. That is the ultimate Christian goal right there. Goals. Hashtag goals. 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 Wow. Um, I see goals. Yeah. See goals. See goals. Shrek goals. So the helmet, as you know, goes on your head. Oh. So having this mindset of like, oh, oh, salvation, I am saved today, I was saved yesterday, and I will be saved tomorrow. Oh. I'm always oh. saved. Oh. You literally just <laughs> explained St. Paul's teaching nice. perfectly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we are saved in three tenses. <laughs> keep going, keep going, it's good. Okay, uh, <laughs> lost my place, but yes, we are saved. Like. We've been saved. Oh my goodness. And this happened so long ago. We didn't we weren't there to see it. Some people were, but they didn't at the time they didn't even realize that they were being saved. They just Whoa. saw they just saw people being crucified right in front of them and they just saw such a terrible and tragic thing, but they didn't realize that something so beautiful was happening right there. Amen. And then now, 2,000 years later, here we are! There's like a huge Catholic church and we're just like... Yes! Yes! Jesus! Died for us! Yes! Jesus! The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Um, this sword is able to pierce through the deepest levels of one's heart and attitude. It is a tool of discernment. An example of this would be um, when Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Yeah? Yeah, yes. Okay. And then he used scripture against him. He was fasting and he was already like, he was getting kind of weak because he wanted, I guess, he needed food and he needed um, nourishment, but he was fasting. It was for good intentions. Even the devil couldn't like get him to fall into that temptation because he used scripture and he had faith in God. Yeah. Being familiar with the word allows us to discern thoughts and attitudes that contradict God's way and defend ourselves against worldly corruption. Training is needed when using the sword so that we can sharpen our spiritual senses. Yeah. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. Like there's, I once went to a camp and they, it wasn't one of your camps, I'm sorry. But it, I went to a camp and, <laughs> I'm sorry. It, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Like yeah. Like or whatever. Like kolaches? Like yeah! Oh, we are the- okay, we're the bread, and then the weenie inside? <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> um, I'm glad you like the kolaches. I once went to this camp, and they said- it was really cheesy, but it's- it's meaningful. Um, every human in their heart has a hole in their heart and the hole in their heart is shaped like Jesus. So Jesus fills the hole that's shaped like him. It was really funny. <laughs> Sword of the Spirit! Yeah? Um, yeah. yeah! Yeah! 
Ah, what is it? Pierce through deepest levels of one's heart and attitude. Okay, so when you have the spirit and you acknowledge that you have the Holy Spirit in you, it like changes you in, in your words, in your actions. Um, a lot of people, and then when that starts, starts to charts, when that starts to <laughs> <laughs> this is that's going downhill from now on. Okay, when we acknowledge the Holy Spirit in us, and we pray, and we go to church, and we're very like connected with God, and it's really affecting the way that we act, especially around people, and around our peers, and people at school, um, it starts to show. <coughs> it shows them that like we're um, we're holy. We're acting. We're being holy because we're following someone who is holiest. I guess they're very holy. Okay, yes. that was way. <laughs> anyway, let's say you're with your friends and they tell you to do something that you don't want to do. It's um, the sort of the spirit helps you like defend what you believe in. Defend in what, um, what God wants you to do. As a disciple of Christ, you have to not only speak as a disciple of Christ, you have to be a disciple of Christ through your words and through your actions and through your thoughts. So when you're presented with something like that, it's your job to use to like pick up the sword of the spirit and defend yourself, defend your beliefs and defend um, what is morally right and what is morally good. And yourself with the Holy Spirit. And yourself with the Holy Spirit. Yes, we did. So overall, the armor of God, we are encouraged to wear it every day. Like when we wake up, we're just like, oh, mm -hmm. I have to put on the armor of God today. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness, yes, we have to wear the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and the sandals of peace. And wearing all of this every single day of our lives will help us be better disciples of Christ and be better warriors of Christ, considering that we're wearing armor. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and this helps us like fend off temptations. Um, it encourages us. It makes us feel like we need to go to the church because the church is like the house of God that's where you go for um, that's where you go to find peace and to find comfort in, in God and, and like in his word and people are there to help you they won't say no to you because because they can't <laughs> so by wearing this every day we are good strengthens us in the person that we are. Yeah. Yeah. We should wear it every day. Yes! Yay! Yes! Yes! Yes, we should! That's not a question! Hey guys, it's Rafe. Hope you guys enjoyed that talk and lecture by my friend and sister in Christ, Krista Trovella. Uh, we have a lot more content on this channel, we have a lot more coming. Uh, we're barely getting started, so please bear with us on the videos, and if we take long, I'm sorry. But uh, there's more stuff on the way, we hope to continue making videos. We really want to help spread the Catholic faith, and what we truly believe, and bring others home to the church. And so, if you support our mission, please um, subscribe, please like our video, share it with your family, your friends, and pray for us. See ya! It's gonna be pretty interesting. Like <laughs> <laughs>